Hi, this is PDF Bergsberg Arcade at bergsbergarcade.com, and this is tutorial 181. So where we left off, we're going to go ahead and open up Unity. Where we left off is we had the code implemented to detect when we click our little head-changing GUI element. Now let's just start it up. I'll clear the console, and when we click it, we can see that it's being increased. Whoops, I clicked the wrong element. And now we want to start implementing the code to actually change the face. So let's go ahead and open up Mono Develop. And the head changer is where we actually change the, the head. And I don't really see anything here that we're going to have to change. Uh, what we're going to want to change is the player customization. Now we're calling this function here, which is a static function. And like we said before, anything that's accessed in here either has to be passed in or static itself. So, well, let's just go through and just start implementing it. The first thing we're going to have to do is go ahead and get a reference to the material that we're actually uh, going to be changing for our head, or at least the texture on the material. So if we were to select our fat guy, let's just zoom in on a bit. And here's his base here. So we'll go down and we already know, well, actually, if we just look at the base part, uh, the character of mesh material is... Um, fat so we'll just select it and of course now that I'm looking at it, I think it might actually be better to break these out into uh, even more variables so you could have one uh, for face one for uh, whatever else is on here we have uh, torso feet so it might even though the reference is the exact same thing it might still be better to expose them here for uh, later on when you come back to go to change the code but let's go ahead and look at fat and I believe there was five one, two, three, four, five. And of course, the face, or at least the head, is the last one, so it's index four. So we're going to want to get a reference to this here. So let's go ahead and we'll come up to the top here. And I'm going to make it private. And I'm going to put it right before the character mesh. So private game object. And I'm going to call this head material. And let me just fix some of the spelling. But I'm not going to assign it anything yet. Uh, if we were to come down here and try to assign it, so let's go right underneath the debug. Um, we'll say, uh, sh you'll notice that you can't even actually get a reference to it. And the reason is because since this is static and everything that's in here either has to be passed in or be static itself, uh, we'd have to go ahead and make this static in order to be able to access it down here. So we'll make it static. Uh, let me make sure I made the right one. I did. And now if we come down here and try to reference it, you notice it's, it's actually showing up and we can actually reference it. Well, the problem is that, remember, everything that's static has to uh, only use other static things. So when we go to actually assign this to, uh, let me open them up again. When we go to try to actually get the reference to uh, this game object in game, uh, this here is gonna to have to be static. And then of course, you know, this variable is used for our mobs as well and we can't really make it static and we don't really want to get into following that pitfall where everything has to be static and set up uh, you know, precisely right so what we're actually going to do is leave this as not static I'm going to come down and make another function one that will not be static but it will not return anything and I'm going to call it uh, change head really should think of something a little bit better but let's just go for that right now and then here's where I'm going to want to actually well, we don't want to actually get the reference to it there but we'll, what we'll want to do is 
I actually use this variable to change the actual material that we're going to be using. And to be honest, uh, these names are already starting to bug me. So I'm going to say change head index. And here will just be change. Yeah, we'll just call it change head. Well, let's not call it change head. Let's call it update. And of course, we'll have to change this over here. And uh, whoops, sorry, we we're supposed to just go to the next script again. And that looks a little bit better. So in this method here, we're just going to use the head material, which we're going to have set up to be a reference to the, well, either fat or muscular part, uh, depending on the, the mesh we're using. And another thing, we really shouldn't reference that actual game object. We should actually reference the material that's on there. If we take a look, instead of just referencing this game object, let's actually go ahead and reference this material uh, right here. So that's number four in the index. Well, we will have to update this a bit. Instead of being a game object, we're just going to call it a material now. And we'll just come down and we're just going to say that it's main texture is equal to, and then we'll just load the new one up, which is resources dot load. And we'll make sure we want to typecast it as a material, or oh, sorry, as a texture. And not a text. And then we'll want to build this path in here of uh, where to load it from. Now we've already gone ahead and made a constant up here that goes to at least the, the faces of the male. And when we start doing the female, I'll we'll have to come up here and do a little bit of editing. But let's just grab the male one for now. We'll come back down, just paste that in. And then we'll just concat onto it. Uh, we know that we start them off with head underscore and then we're going to want the the actual head index which is right here oops I forgot to leave this here and then the next part is another underscore and then the skin color index uh, which is, I'm probably going to want to change this too as well to uh, uh, change skin index or something like that. But for now, let's just keep working with this part. And then let's also add, we have the suffix of human, I believe, at the end. And I'm just going to quickly go ahead and take a look. So we open up the resources folder and we know it, we got this path, right? So it's head, number, yep, so everything looks fine. And we're going to need a way to call this. So what I'm going to do is create another variable up here, which will be static and private. And I'll just throw it at the bottom here. Uh, it's just going to be a Boolean value. And I'm just going to say update, meaning that uh, the, the, the visual display of our character needs to be updated. And I'll just start that off as false. And I'll just actually quickly fix that because all my private variables I like to have an underscore in front of. And I'll just come down here, set update. I did not make it static, which is what I meant to do. All right, so now we'll come back down. And now when we try to access it, update is equal to true and then we'll go to our actual update function and right here we're going a rotation uh, right here we check to make sure that we have a character mesh we'll just do it right after here and we're just going to say if update 
Now, static variables can be used in non-static uh, methods or referenced through non-static variables as well, or assigned to non-static variables. Uh, so, if update does not equal null, or sorry, does not equal false, which is the same as saying if update, uh, we're going to call this function here. Now this isn't going to work right out of the bag because remember we're just changing the material and we don't actually have a reference to that material yet. And it would be nice to be able to stick it one spot where we'd go ahead and get all the references to the different materials that we need for each part. But for now I'm just going to stick it down here. And I'm just going to say head material is equal to, and we're just going to grab the character mesh dot get component the component we'll want is the player character script and the variable we'll want is let me go up to the base uh, character material mesh so character material mesh and that's going to give me this game object and we'll want to get the material number four off of it. So we can say dot renderer dot materials and just specify the fourth one for now. And let's just stop this and we'll see if we have any errors with it. Uh, none seem to be popping up, so let's give it a try. So we come in, we click the button. And you can't really notice it too well here. We really should add um, some sort of zoom when we're playing around with the head, where it zooms in on the head. But we can zoom in on it here. And, well, actually, let's just start over. So we'll start it back up, and as we click the button, you know, we can see that it actually is changing. And let's try the colors. And the colors are actually changing as well. Now we're going to have to do something with the old material, as uh, or sorry, the old texture. If we were to turn it on detect leaks, uh, let me go ahead and find my camera. We're not destroying the old material. So actually, let's go full screen for this one because we don't need to actually look at the image. Uh, just keep an eye on the textures here. So if we start changing, we notice that they keep going up and it's basically loaded them all into memory now this is the the default color which is our medium color so if we were to switch to the light color it's going to load all of those up into memory again and we don't really need them all loaded up into memory we, we only need the one and of course you know you have the dark one uh, but we'll get around to that after maybe we'll have the update set to where it updates everything that needs to be updated and and then we'll just call the unload of resources. I was playing around earlier trying to get it to get rid of the unneeded materials and it actually went through and messed around with my materials that I actually had, or sorry, my textures that I had set in the resources folder so I had to re-import them in and set them back up again. Uh, so that's something I'll play around with a little bit later. But right now we have it set up to actually change the face the way we want it. So let's move on to doing something like hair next. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.